In this video, I want to go through an explicit example of how to evaluate a commutator. So in a previous video, we introduced complementary observables and we discussed how those observables will have operators that uh, that don't commute and that we could quantify how complementary these operators are to one another using commutators, right? So basically we would um, evaluate the commutator to show the different outcomes of using these operators in different orders, right? So if you have two operators, uh, omega one and omega two, you're quantifying the difference in operating first with omega two versus operating first with omega one, right? And I, I told you that, you know, any set of complementary observables will be subject to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So if that's the case, then that means that position and momentum should be complementary observable since those were the first two properties that we introduced in the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So that's what I want to do in this video, show explicitly that position and momentum are complementary observables by evaluating their commutator, right? So first, uh, to show that these are complementary observ observables, we will evaluate the commutator. So we need to evaluate the commutator between the position and momentum operators, right? So we'll have the position operator and the momentum operator, right? So if we evaluate this commutator and we get something that's not zero, then that means that these operators are complementary operators. Position and momentum would be complementary observables, right? So we wanna evaluate this commutator. So to do that, Right, we know that this commutator is going to be equal to, you know, if we come through with the momentum operator first, minus the outcome of if we apply the position operator first. Okay, cool. So again, position operator is just going to be multiplying by x, and we know that the momentum operator is just going to be h bar over i times the first derivative with respect to x. So we want to evaluate each one of these outcomes. So first let's do the one on the left, right? So first let's apply the momentum operator first, then come through with the position operator, right? So what you wanna do here is you wanna apply this to some trial wave function. It doesn't have to be an actual function. Just apply it to some general trial wave function in order to evaluate the commutator. So basically we're gonna do uh, momentum operator first, position operator, acting on some trial wave function psi, right? So if we do that, then we're gonna have X, right? Since the, the position operator is just multiplying by X, so we'll have x times h bar over i d psi dx, right? So that's the result that we get when we apply the momentum operator first and then multiply by the position operator, right? This is the final result that we get, right? Since we're just doing a trial wave function, we can't really simplify this expression down any further. So this is what we get when we apply uh, the operators in this order. Now, what happens when we apply the operators in the opposite order, right? So when we flip these guys, so if we apply position operator first, then momentum operator, what do we get? So again, apply these to some trial wave function. So apply these to some trial wave function psi. So what do we get from that? So we'll have h bar over i on the outside, but now the derivative is being taken of x times psi, right? So psi is going to be a function of x, right? Our trial function is some function of x. So if we have x times psi, that means that we have to do the product rule in this case, right? So it's gonna be different than this one because now we're taking the derivative of a product of two functions of x, right? So let's do that. So we're gonna to have to use the product rule here. So we're gonna have x d psi dx plus psi dx dx, 
right? So when we take the derivative of x with respect to x, that's just going to give us one, right? So we'll be left with h bar over i x d psi dx plus psi. Right. So now the last piece to evaluate this uh, this commutator is we're going to have to take the difference between these two results. Right. So we got this result. For applying the momentum operator first, and then we got this result. For applying the um, the position operator first. Right. So now we just want to take the difference between the two. So let's do that. So we want to take the difference. between these two results. So if we have, you know, x hat uh, rho hat minus rho hat x minus uh, x hat, right? So basically we're taking the difference between these two results, right? So when we uh, applied the momentum operator first, we got this. So that's gonna be x h hat over i d psi dx minus this result, right? So I'm going to uh, distribute that h bar over i. So we'll have first term as x h bar over i d psi dx uh, minus h bar over i times psi, right? So just distributing that guy through. Okay, so we get some cancellation here, right? So these two terms are exactly the same. So these guys will actually cancel with one another. And so that would give us our final result here, which would be negative h bar over i, right? So now once, once you're done subtracting all of this stuff, you can drop the trial wave function. So this gives you the difference between these two, uh, these two uh, versions of the operations, right? When you come through with the momentum operator first versus when you come through with the position operator first. So that gives you your, um, your final result here. Now this can be rewritten since negative one is equal to I squared, right? We can actually rewrite this final result as I H bar, right? And if you look back at the general statement of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, right? If we wanted to express this as um, our general Heisenberg uncertainty principle, right? We had x rho x, how bad are you supposed to be the uncertainty? So the uncertainty in position times the uncertainty in momentum is going to be greater than or equal to one half the absolute modulus of the commutator, right? So if you plug this in, right, you plug in this result that you get for the commutator to, uh, after evaluating the commutator, you take the absolute modulus of that, you do get the h bar over two that I introduced in the first video for the uncertainty principle. So that's where that value comes from for the uncertainty principle is the actual commutator evaluating that commutator between momentum and position. Okay, so this is commutators. This is an example of how to, um, how to evaluate a commutator. And every set of complementary observables will correspond to operators that have a non-zero commutation relation, right? So you should be able to evaluate a commutator for, um, for any two complementary operators and get a non-zero result back like we did here in this example.